Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be having a look at device tracking within Home Assistant. Okay, when it comes to device tracking within Home Assistant, you do have uh, quite a lot of options. Home Assistant components do exist for some more of the popular routers. So for example, if you're here in the UK and you have a Sky router, you can get a component for Home Assistant that will track the devices on your network. Uh, you can find out more about that on the Home Assistant component page and also search to see if your router has a, a native component that can be used. I'm running PFSense. Um, which I might do some videos about in the future, but I'm still kind of learning a lot about PFSense myself. Um, but there's no native component or no supportive uh, component for PFSense that will do da um, device tracking within Home Assistant. So we've got a couple of other options available to us. We can do GPS tracking. I have been playing with that a little bit with Life360 and Tracker. But neither of them are perfect. Um, Tracker particularly inv is quite involved. And if you're using the app on your phone, you have to do port forwarding in your router and use dynamic DNS servers and so on. And it's just very involved. Life360 and Home Assistant, it's Life360 at the moment hasn't got a component for uh, Home Assistant. There does exist a GitHub that I can't remember the name of the chap who has created that. So apologies for that, but I'll, I will leave a link in the description to it. Um, and he's got a repository for Life360, but it just doesn't 100% work. So the options that we have left to us are either a program called, or a component called Nmap, or a component called ping. Uh, today we're going to look specifically at ping. So the first thing we want to do is go into our home assistant and you can see here that we have the uh, IKEA trad free lights set up here. Um, now if you don't know how we've got to this stage take a look back at the video that I'll put a card up for now. Uh, take a look at that and it'll tell you how to get to, to this stage. So we're going to go ahead and dive into our configuration file. So we're going to go to configuration.yaml and we're going to do open with notepad++. And we covered all of this in a previous video, so if you don't know, quite know what we're doing here, go and have a look there. So in a configuration.yaml file, we're going to type here device underscore tracker. And next, we're going to uh, tab in hyphen platform. And then here we put whatever platform we're using. So there's many that exist. And when you look on the component pages, you'll see that this, this first uh, bit of text I've put here is quite standard. And then, then the next uh, bit is depending on the component you're using. So I've already said we're going to use a component called ping. Hit enter again. Um, and then we're going to list our hosts. So in this example, we're just going to track one device. That's going to be my phone. But we you can track more than one device. Uh, so we're just going to put hosts. Uh, and come under that and come in a few spaces. And then we're going to put the name of our first, first host. This is going to be my phone. So I'm just going to put my name in there. And then you need to put the IP address that your DHCP server assigns your device. Now, if you don't know how to find this, um, Google it for your uh, router. I will quickly show you in PFSense, but it's very likely to be different in uh, in your setup. So in here, we go to status DHCP leases. And I happen to know that my phone is, is this one here, although it doesn't say the name. Um, most of the times, your yours will come up uh, with a name in there. And uh, so I know that my 
phone is 192.168.0.20. So we can jump back over here and put that in. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and click save. Okay, we're going to jump back over to Home Assistant. Now, we've made a change to the configuration.yaml file. So before that change takes hold, we're going to have to reset Home Assistant. But before resetting Home Assistant, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, you want to ensure that your configuration file is valid. If you don't do this and your configuration.yaml file isn't valid and you do a restart, you run the risk of corrupting your uh, instance of Home Assistant and not being able to boot back into it. So to do that, we go to the configuration tab, go to general and scroll down to uh, configuration validation. Click check configuration and you can see we've got configuration valid. If there was something wrong, you would get red text here um, stating what the error is. So now we know that our configuration is valid. We can go to HASIO and head along to system and then we're going to reboot the system. Now this does take a little while to do. So I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back when the system is rebooted. Okay, now Home Assistant has restarted. We can head over to the overview page and we can see now at the top of the page here, we have uh, a device tracking icon for myself. Um, so at the moment it says that I'm home, which I am. Um, and that's because my device, my mobile phone, that we put the IP address in for earlier, is currently connected to the network. If I were not connected to the network, that would say away. So now we have a way of tracking a device, we can use this in some automations. So let's look at an example. So let's go configuration and automation and we'll add an automation. Um, we're going to call this uh, light, Lights Off. So what we're going to do here is say that if my phone is not connected to the network, all of the lights will go off. Okay. So we can use state for this. If you have GPS tracking, you can use uh, geolocations for this instead. But because we're doing uh, router-based uh, device tracking, we're just going to stick with the, the state. So we're going to select our entity. So our entity is the device tracker dot Lee. Uh, just ignore from, but we're going to say to when this goes to uh, not home. Depending on the device tracker you're using, so here we're using ping and ping uses home or not home, some device trackers will use home and away. Not like the TV show, uh, home comma away. So look at the component page on the Home Assistant website to know which of these you need to use, but if you're using ping, and you want an automation when your device is up off the network that is not home that you use in there. So you said when the status of tracker.ly is not home, we can add another trigger and a condition in here. So the condition could be something like and it's within a certain time frame or whatever you want really. So we've said when my phone has left the network, we want to call a service and that service is going to be uh, light turn off. Okay. Now to get the service data, the easiest way to do this is to open up another tab with your home assistant in it again and go to the services. Now light turn off is already here because I've been I've been playing with this. Um, but if it's not, you just scroll through the list and find light turn off. Then find the entity you want. So it's lamp three in our case. And this is the service data here. So we can just copy and paste this. Copy. 
and paste. Now here we're just we're just using one light as an example, but if you did want to do the whole home, what you can do is if we go back over here and we click on the statuses, uh, we can scroll down here and we can see all the lights. But you can see we've also got a group, this group dot all lights here, and if we click on it, we can see the entity up here. If you wanted all of the lights in your house to go off, then this is uh, the data you could use to do that. Well, we're just going to stick with the one light for this example. It's the only light I currently have plugged in anyway. So we'll go ahead and click save. Now, really automations, because it's not a change to the configuration.yaml file, automation should just work straight away. However, I do, as best practice, like to uh, do a um, confirm that uh, everything is valid and do a restart on Home Assistant just to avoid any bugs that might be in the system. Um, so we'll go down, we'll check our configuration, it is valid. So again, we'll go ahead and we'll do a system reboot and we'll come back once this is up and running again. Okay, now Home Assistant has restarted. We're going to go ahead and go back to the overview screen and now we can see we have this automations box. So we're going to go ahead and turn the lamp on. Now I know that you can't see what's just happened because this is a screen capture, uh, but you will see in a second that I have a lamp set up next to my desk with this smart bulb in it. What you can do in here is you can go to your automation and you can trigger your automation. So our automation was for this light to turn off when the automation is triggered. So we go ahead and trigger it manually and that just is going to confirm to us that this automation uh, should work. So let's take a look at this automation and make sure it's all working correctly. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off on my phone, uh, simulating me leaving the network. And if we give it a moment or two, we'll see when it realizes my phone isn't on the network, it will turn the light off. And that's it guys, that's the basics of device tracking uh, via your Wi-Fi on Home Assistant. This can be really handy for you know many things and you can put other things in here like if we go back to the automation that we made and we say that we can add a trigger so if you have your phone and your wife or girlfriend or husband or partner's phone on the on the device tracker as well and perhaps your kids phones you can add them all into here and that automation won't trigger until they're all the way there is a, a another way of doing that as well we can go to um devices and there should be a yeah group all devices so because one because at least one of my devices is showing as home at the moment the state of group all devices as home but if all of my devices were away from home that would show up as away or not home um so you know you can set it up that way so nobody's getting the lights turned off on them when they're when they're actually at home probably are going to have a look at gps tracking in a, another video um, because GPS tracking can be interesting as well. So you could say, for example, uh, when your child gets to school, you get a text message to say that they've safely arrived at school. Um, and, but we'll have a look at that in a different video because that is a bit more in-depth. Well, if you have found this video helpful at all, please do subscribe to my channel. Subscriptions mean a lot and they're very helpful. Uh, so please do that if you can. And also comment and like. Thank you for watching.